بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد Brothers and sisters I'm not a stranger to most of you and inshallah ta'ala we're going to have a very interactive lecture today so one needs to be very very attentive some of us brothers and sisters might have been forced today to come here some of us we might have what been forced to sit in the masjid today and some of us we might have come maybe to show off or maybe for any other reason so i ask you ikhwani billah i ask you by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in both cases, you're going to stay here. In both cases, you're going to end up staying here anyway. So if one now has been forced to come here, then wallahi, if you're not here to seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're getting absolutely nothing. The hadith that we've heard maybe a million times, and I'm going to mention it inshallah ta'ala for the million and one time. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Who narrated the hadith? Who can tell me? Huh? From those that are present. Is there no one here? Who was the Sahabi that basically narrated the hadith? نعم جزاك الله خير يا شيخ عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه إنما الأعمال بنيات بمعنى لا يقبل أي عمل إلا بنية No action is accepted except with what? The correct intention If you are here to show off you're getting absolutely nothing If you're here because you got forced by either Ab or Hoya or by Ayaya you're getting absolutely nothing So rectify your intention now you want to sit here and seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to leave this masjid insha'Allah ta'ala. You've at least benefited. And you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think for a moment brothers. Imagine for hours and hours we're sitting in this masjid today. Hours and hours and hours and hours. We're sitting in this masjid. But because of your incorrect intention... You get absolutely nothing. On your al Qiyamah, you're thinking to yourself, Wallahi, inshaAllah ta'ala, I've at least got, you know, يعني, a few rewards in my bank. Oh, I attended this masjid, I attended this masjid with my dad and with my mom. She brought me there, she took me there. But then you come on your al Qiyamah, you don't have absolutely anything. Nothing. Why? Because your intention. And let me give you one hadith, inshaAllah ta'ala, before I move into the topic. And... I need to be very, very quickly here because I've got a lesson at 9 o'clock. And I'll give you an example of the one that borrows money. To show you the positive impact and the negative impact the intention can have on a person. You know when you go and you borrow maybe one pound, two pound, three pound from your friend or from your father, from your uncle. Look what the Prophet Sallallahu says. Man akhada amwal nasi يُرِيدُ أَدَّاهَا أَدَّ اللَّهُ عَنْ Whoever takes the money or whoever borrows money from a person and pay attention here brothers and sisters pay attention يُرِيدُ أَدَّاهَا He wants to pay the money back He makes the intention that he wants to pay the money back What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? أَدَّ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him pay the money back. وَمَنْ أَخَذَ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ يُرِيدُ إِتْلَافَهَا أَتْلَفَهُ اللَّهِ And whoever borrows money and he wants to do the guy over. Do you know what that means? He wants to do him over. Do I need to break it down in English or do you all understand this terminology? What does it mean? He wants to do him over, innit? Huh? So I borrow money. What's your name, Akhi? Ahmed. I borrow money from Ahmed. 
And in my intention, I don't want to pay Ahmed back because I have a silly, evil intention. Because of this what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do me over. And if I want to pay it back to Ahmed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me pay it back. And there's many, many examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, there's not much khair in the matters that take place between the people. إلا من أمر بصدقة. Except when a man, he's what? Commanding and advising the people to pay sadaqa. Or he's telling them to do good. Or islah in bayna nas. Or he's trying to rectify and solve the problems between the people. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ بْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ Whoever does that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَصَوْفَ نُؤْتِيهَا جَرًا عَظِيمًا This person will give him a great reward. Sometimes you find Jama' and Ahmad have fought against each other. Who do we have? Jama' and who? Ahmad. And me, for example, now Muhammad. I know that Jama' he has a lot of money. He's a very rich person. And Jama' keeps asking me, Akhi, stop the problems between me and Ahmad. I want to get this rectified. And I know that Jama' is a very, very generous person. So I only go now and I start solving the problems between them because I know that Jama' is generous and after I'm done with whatever I'm doing, he's got, what's he going to do? He's going to give me, inshallah ta'ala, some of his spare chain that he has in his pocket and he's going to give it to me. Did I do this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or did I do this now to get that pennies and that pounds? Out of his pocket. Do you understand, Ikhwan? Brothers and sisters, are you not with me? How the intention now can either destroy a person or it can have a positive impact on a person's dunya and likewise in the hereafter. So brothers, sisters, please rectify your intentions. Whatever the case might be, you're going to be staying here. You're going to be staying here. So you might as well do it properly. You might as well do the matter properly. Inshallah ta'ala, what we're going to be discussing today is a taqwa. Does anyone know what the meaning of taqwa means? If I say to you, ittaqillah, what does that mean? Huh? Fear Allah. It only means fear Allah. Is that correct? The whole lecture is about this. One time, Sheikh Falah Ismail, who is from the major scholars in Kuwait, when he came down to Leicester, I was translating for him. And the Sheikh was speaking about taqwa. When he's speaking in Arabic, the Sheikh knows a bit of English. Before I even said anything, he goes to everyone that's sitting here. He goes to them. Look at the translator now. He's going to say that taqwa means fear. And he's totally wrong. If you go back to the translation of the Quran and you look at where it says taqwa, what happens? What does it say? It says fear. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's only maybe a portion of what a taqwa means. Very, very hard to get the word taqwa and translate it with one word. So the Shaykh. While I'm translating for him in a packed masjid, he's taking the mikah of me. He's telling the people, look at the translator now, before I even spoke, before I even translated, he's telling the people, look, the translator now is going to say taqwa is fear. And he is totally wrong. So everyone starts laughing. Ala kullin. Inshallah ta'ala, we want to explain what a taqwa means. And how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of us being heedless about these matters, it has affected the way we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah ta'ala, 
Whoever has a pen might want to write this down. Brothers, I ask you a question. Why was some Sahaba more knowledgeable than others? And this is just a side benefit which is outside the topic. Why were certain Sahaba more knowledgeable than others? Who was the one that knew the most hadith? Who can tell me? Huh? Abu Huraira, Jazakumullah Khair. Abu Huraira mentioned, Ma kana ahadun akthar hadithan minni illa ma kana min Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. Nobody knew more hadith than me, except one person. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. Why? فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ يَكْتُبْ وَلَا أَكْتُبْ He used to write it down and I never used to write it down. Shows you what? How many lectures, how many lectures take place in this masjid, in this masjid? Many lectures. I know that the organizer here tries to organize monthly basis lectures for the community. And how much do we remember from the last lecturer that came? When he gave a lecture, I remember the last one that came is who? Abdurrahman Hassan. Sah? The Somali brother. Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan, he came and he gave a lecture. Does anyone remember any benefits from the last lecture? Most of us we don't. Why? Because it went through one ear and it came out the other. And that's what happens when we don't write it down. Lecture after lecture after lecture, conference after lecture, and ila akhire. They come and they go. Just like the foam comes on the side of the sea, it comes and then it goes. The wave comes and it takes it away. Why? Because we haven't written it down. We haven't written it down. And one of the main ways to have the ma'lumat yuthbitu fi dihnik. Where the ma'lumat, the information that you study to become firm in your head is by studying and revising that which has been written down from the lectures that you attend and etc. So inshallah ta'ala brothers and sisters, please note this down. I remember your faces now. I come, it, I come to this message a lot. So the next time I'm here inshallah ta'ala, the faces that I can remember, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. Brother is trying to show his face. I remember your face now properly. Tayyib. If you go back to the books of Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, you find that when it comes to the issue of taqwa, they speak about three matters. Love. Everybody knows what love means. Everyone knows how to make love, but they don't know actually what love means. So love, hope, and fear. These three things. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to elaborate on every single matter inshallah. Can everyone put, yani can those that love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah put their hands up? Is there anyone here that doesn't love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger? Why are some people struggling? Is it hard? Everyone loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his messenger. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين A man he's not a true believer. Until what? He loves me more than his parents, his children and the people altogether. One time Umar ibn Khattab, he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أَنَا أُحِبَّكْ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا نَفْسِي I love you, Ya Rasulullah, more than anything. Except myself. I love myself more. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, لا يا عمر, no. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he said this to him, Umar ibn al-Khattab replied back and he said, أُحِبُّكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I love you, O Messenger of Allah, more than anything. So the Prophet said, الآن, now, yes. And how many people today, they claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, but at the same time they oppose Him. 
You know your mother, your mother. Your mother's ikhwani. If someone insulted your mother, would you have it? Would anyone here be happy? Nobody's going to be happy here. Sah? Is there anyone here that allows someone to come and cuss his mother or insult his mother? Why? Why don't you like it? Huh? Because she's your mother, isn't it? She's your mother. How many people do we find? When someone speaks about his mother, he gets angry. And then when she shouts at him, he spits in her face. Does this guy truly love his mother? Kalam Fariq. He just speaks. And any person with aql, with intellect, will say that this guy, he doesn't love his parents. Absolutely not. Is that clear, Juan? And same goes with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One day we're saying, we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we want him, we want to be with him on Yom Al Qiyamah. But on the other end, we what? We're trying to be like Messi and Ronaldo and Beckham. Actually, forget Beckham, he's old now. All these are available now. We want to have their names on the back of our shirts. We glorify them. Day and night we're speaking about them. And at the same time, when the salah is being called, we're watching the game instead. What happened to us loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger? The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us what? إِذَا سَمِعْتُمُ النِّدَاءَ فَأَجِبْ When you hear the nida, then answer the call. He said that to a blind sahabi. A blind sahabi. When you hear the adhan, then go attend the prayer. Forget about anyone else. There's an ayah in the Quran. There's an ayah in the Quran. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ Say to them, O Muhammad, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Say to them, O Muhammad, if they truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then tell them to follow me. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala, he said about this ayah, it is called Ayatul Mihna, the verse of examination. Hassan al-Basri, he mentioned, زَعَمُوا أَنَّهُمْ يُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَابْتَلَاهُمُ اللَّهُ بِهَذِهِ الْآيَةِ Some people, they claimed, they thought that they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. So he tested them with this ayah. So you, you, if you truly believe, or you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as messenger, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you stand up, you stand up. He tells you sit down, you sit down. No why, when, what, how, the six W's they taught you in English, put that to the side. You are a slave, you have a master, and you do what you've been told to do. Are you going to be like the Yehud who said, Sami'na wa asayna? We listen and we disobey. So they know everything that's going on. What do they say? We disobey. Plainly like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna kana qawla al-mu'mineen. إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا It is only the statement of the believer. When he is called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger to rule between them, he says what? سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا I listen and I obey. Nothing else to it. When you know that what you've done is wrong and that the other person is right and someone comes to judge between you don't start getting angry and start getting all emotional and you can't take the blame admit it and take it on from there 
Sami'na wa ata'na. Nothing else. I listen and I obey. Let me ask you a question. And you find that a lot of people, especially a lot of these orientalists, they say, what is the reason behind this? Why do I have to do this? But my aqal, my intellect, it doesn't go in accordance to this. My intellect can't. Doesn't allow it. They ask you, what's the wisdom behind it? No, you do it, and then after that, look for maybe the hikmah. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you to stone? You know the jamarat in hajj. People call it the shaitan. You know the three things that you have there. That you have to stone in, Araf, uh, in, uh, in hajj. Does everyone know where I'm coming from? Taib. Is this anything other uh, than a stone? It's a stone, sah? That you're stoning. One time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to stone the stone. To throw stones at it. Hajar al-Aswad, the black stone that is connected to the Kaaba. What do the Muslims do? They kiss it. Why do you have to kiss one and why do you have to stone another? Huh? Simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so. Umar ibn al-Khattab says, Inni la'a'lamu annaka hajarun la tadurru wa la tanfa'. He's speaking to the stone. He's telling him, I know that you are a stone. Doesn't benefit, nor does it harm. لولا أني رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقبلك ما قبلتك. Had I not seen the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم kiss you, I wouldn't have kissed you. What is it? طاعة. Obedience. Straight away. Don't ask how, don't ask why. Listen and obey. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you stay away from drugs, you stay away from drugs. That is the true love. The one that claims the true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger. Sami'na wa ta'na. Sit down, he sits down. Stand up, he stands up. Go there, he goes there. Go right, he goes right. There's no two ways to it. And this is the true love. The poet said, إِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ مُطِيعُ The one that loves, he always follows that one that he loves. And an example of this is a guy, you know a guy, that is so infatuated. He loves that woman so much. Do you not know the story of Romeo and Juliet? Sheikh Falah Ismail told us about this as well. Romeo and Juliet. The Arabs, they have their own version called Majnoon Layla. The guy that was Majnoon, Majnoon means crazy. The one that was crazy about Layla. He loved her so much, what did he do? He started kissing the walls, the door, all sides of the house. When he wasn't able to get to her, same thing with Romeo, he loved Julia so much, he's coming down the house, I love you, I this. Because what? He loves Julia. I'm not telling you to go read this. Don't go read it. It's a bunch of rubbish and uh, I'm just trying to give you a point. What happens when a person really loves someone? As they say, love is blind. Al-hubhu yu'mi wa yasum. Love is blind, it makes you blind as if you're hypnotized. Just going. I love that girl, khalas. He doesn't see anything else. Everything else is blurry. The only thing that he can see is that woman. So he loves her. She tells him, buy me this. Buy me a Gucci bag. Buy me this bag. Louis Vuitton. He buys anything. He'll probably even go steal something to get the money in order to fulfill her request. He'll do anything, anything. In order for what? To do what she wants. Because he loves her. With his heart and with everything inside his body. Sah? Otherwise, would he do anything? A person that you don't like, what are you going to do? You're going to tell her, Assalamu alaikum. You're not even going to look at her twice. 
So the point is, ikhwan, brothers and sisters, truly the one that loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, he does exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to do. And he doesn't ask why. Submits to it with full submission, without thinking twice. And this is how we need to be. Do you not remember when Charlie Hebdo, what's it called? Hebdo. Charlie Hebdo. Hebdo is a madrasa in, uh, in Birmingham. I got it mixed up. Hebdo, Charlie Hebdo. What happened when that guy started drawing stuff? Huh? They attacked the cartoon space. They attacked, yani, all sorts of things happened. Whether the attack was real or it was you know, made up, that's not the point. The point is the whole ummah stood up. Every Muslim got angry. Every Muslim got angry. And rightly so. The Prophet وسلم, is being what? Spoken about. In a negative way. People are drawing pictures about him. No, this is wrong. Naam, it's wrong. How do we deal with it? See how everybody gets angry when someone speaks badly about the Prophet وسلم. There's protest. Everyone comes out. Everybody's writing stuff. Look at the Masjid at Fajr Salat. If you get one line, Wallahi ni'mah, blessing. When people are protesting, how many thousands of people come out? The streets are for police. He's holding his head, what are we going to do today? Huh? They can't handle anything. Everyone's out. When people say khilafa, 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 we need to establish khilafa. Everyone comes out. And maybe his wife is not wearing hijab. He's calling to Khilafa. We need to establish a Khilafa. At the same time, there's no Khilaf in his house. Change your house. Teach your kids the basics of their religion. You do when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to grow your beard. Or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, grow your beard. Because it is something that he commanded. You grow it straight away. He told you to leave this off. You leave it straight away. That is the true ta'ah. That is the true ta'a following of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger. Nothing else. So everyone gets angry. But at the same time, the first example that I gave you, the one that gets angry when people speak about his mother, but at the same time spits in her face. Or he disobeys her. Today what? We get angry when someone speaks about our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But 364, how many days in a year? 365. Forget about the khilaf, whether it's 364.999 or 333. Forget about the difference of opinion, 365. Let's leave it to that. 364 days of the year, we are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That one day when someone speaks about the Prophet, everybody gets angry. Brothers and sisters, is that fair? Is that how we should be? Is that true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger? No, it's not. And then you have Ikhwani hope. Hope. Which is also part of a taqwa. Hope. Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah are in between when it comes to. The deviant sex in regards to the issue of hope. Or when it comes to regards to the issue of Iman. You have people that become too complacent. Whatever he does. All the actions that he does. It has no effect on his Iman. No effect on a person. And there's some people that believe that. As long as you say La ilaha illallah with your tongue. And you believe that no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My actions has no significance. So the guy that's committing zina, who is sleeping with his girlfriend or stealing or killing, there's no difference between him and the guy that prays every day in the masjid. No difference. Why? Very complacent. So he'll do whatever he wants. He'll say, Allahu ghafoorur rahim. 
Allah will forgive me. If I do zina, if I smoke, if I deal with drugs, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim. Naam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ghafoor Rahim. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with hope and likewise with fear, which is the third issue that we wanted to speak about. You are in the middle. You are in the middle. You don't get too complacent. And you don't become too fearful. Too fearful. Where it leads to your destruction. Brothers, some of you might be wondering, Wallahi, I want to change my life. I've been involved in drugs. I have this problem. I have this issue. I want to change my life. Forget about the major sins. Stealing, smoking, drugs. That's a major sin. A major sin. Kabiratun min kabair al the most greatest sin to go to a grave and ask that person in the grave, that righteous person, O oh, Fulani, provide me with children. O oh, Fulani, get me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirkum billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. To associate partners of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more greater than drug dealing, zina, and everything else. Whatever your sin might be, whatever your sin might be, Ikhwan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. Allah says in the Quran, say to them, O Muhammad, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي يَالَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Tell them, O Muhammad, those that have transgressed, they've sinned, whether they've stole, whether they've killed, whether they've committed zina, he's been smoking drugs day and night. Do not lose hope in that. Mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yaghfiru dunuba jami'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Brothers and sisters, pay attention here. Every single person makes sins. It is part of Bani Adam to make sins. It is part of Bani Adam to make sins. It's part of his nature. He is bound to make sins all the time. It's part of his DNA. What did the Prophet sallallahu say? Inna bani Adam khatta. The son of Adam is someone that is khatta. Sighatul mubalagha. He excessively makes mistakes. Wa khayrul khatta ina tawabun. The best of them are those that repent. Inna kum tukhtiwuna bil layli wal nahar. Wa ana aghfiru dhunub jami'a. So what do we understand from this hadith? That one makes mistakes all the time. Brother in the red, say it properly. Say it properly. You make mistakes day and night. That's everyone. That's universally agreed by the people that they're gonna fall into sins. But the majority of the people, what don't, what don't they do? Who can tell me? Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How easy is it to repent? That you sit down, you become regretful, you decide not to go back to your action that you just did, and you're sincere in your tawbah. Oh Allah forgive me. That's simple. The majority of people they don't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the issue in our society. You make mistakes, fine. It's part to happen. It's bound to happen. Ikhwani, forget about us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ لَأُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا In a sitting 70 times. Some narrations 100 times. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive me. The man, Allah, the man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave his past sins and his future sins. At the same time, he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him. Where do you stand? Where do me and you stand? When is the last time from all the sins that you have? Have you even ever in your life Said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive me for my sins. So a person now, he falls into sin. More sin, more sin, more sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you and you fall into more sin. Until when, ikhwan? Look how rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. But until when are you going to use your intellect and actually go running back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
يرجون رحمته ويخافون عذابه إن عذاب ربك كان غراما they hope for his mercy and at the same time they fear for his punishment so brothers and sisters the salaf when they used to go to bed they used to think about all the mistakes that they did throughout the whole day and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them can we ever say the things that we have done we put our hands up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we said forgive us so he came in the hadith of Qudsi فَاسْتَغْفِرُونِي أَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ask me for forgiveness and I will forgive you no matter what it is brothers and sisters do not be like those that say do not be like those that say wallahi khalas huh? I'm going to fire I've been with my girlfriend for 70 years khalas I got no return Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to forgive me anything anything it came in a narration if one was to come now with sins the size of the heavens and the earth ya ibn adam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith al-Qudsi Wala ubali I do not care and I will forgive this person but he needs to come to me Brothers and sisters are you with me? Wallahi shameful how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is but we don't go back to him and at the same time he gives us he gives us money, the food that you eat. He puts food on your table. How many kids are dying? How many kids like you to his age? They don't have nothing day and night, they're crying. And then you sin, at the same time you don't seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. And the third thing inshallah ta'ala ikhwani, Being fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearing that your actions are not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let me give an example now of a little kid that likes ice cream. Is there anyone here that doesn't like ice cream? Especially with the flakes, ah? Huh? With the flakes, it's more tastier. Tayyib. When the kid, he's inside his house. What do they call them? Ice cream uh, vans, huh? The ice cream vans comes past and he's making his usual noise. That kid, he loves what? What does he love? He loves the ice cream. And at the same time, he's hoping that he's able to get the money from his father or his uncle or his mother in time. Hoping that what? He manages to reach that van in order to get his ice cream. And at the same time, he fears what? That the van might run away or might go away. What are the three things that we just mentioned now? Love, hope and fear. This kid now what? He loves the ice cream. He hopes that he's able to get the money from his parents in order to what? To go buy the ice cream. And the third thing is what? Fear. At the same time he fears. The ice cream van is going to run away and he's not going to be able to get the ice cream that he really hopes for and he really loves. And that's how one should have taqwa. That's how one should have taqwa. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He needs to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. He needs to love what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated upon him. At the same time, he hopes for the reward. He hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him. And at the same time, he fears that whatever he's done from the salat, the zakat, the sadaqah, the hajj, the psalm is not accepted from him. The Salaf, the Salaf. Ikhwani, when we talk about the Salaf, we mean the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Tabi'a Tabi'een. Let me give an example of Umar ibn Khattab. <clears throat> One time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Hudayf ibn al-Yamani, you know Hudayf ibn al-Yamani, Sahabiyun Jalil, radiyallahu anhu, who the munafiqun wa? 
You know what munafiq is? The hypocrites. So only one person knows. Sahib al-Siri was called. The one that knew the secrets of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He told him about who the munafiqs were. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told him. Umar ibn al-Khattab. Having fear for himself. That whatever he does is not being accepted. As soon as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam dies. He runs to Hudayfa and he grabs him and he asks him, Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mention me from amongst the munafiqeen? Allahu Akbar. This is Khalifa to Thani, the second Khalifa, the most virtuous after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The man that the shaytan used to be scared of. Ma laqiyaka shaytanu. Never did shaitan see you take a path except that he was scared and he ran away and he went through another path. They thought the Sahabas they were in awe of Umar ibn Khattab and radiallahu an. The kuffar they thought he was invincible due to his quwa, his strength in al-iman and how he was. The same time what? He fears for himself. So one should fear, whatever I might do, Wallahi, as, as soon as Ramadan finish, I'm going Jannah. I've been standing on Laylatul Qadr. I've been standing throughout the 10 days of, the last 10 days of Ramadan. I've been performing Sadaq, I've been performing Siyam. I am going Jannah. I can chill now. For the rest of the year, I'm going to come back next Ramadan. Okay, who told you that your salah that you prayed is accepted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We hope for the reward of Allah azza wa jal and at the same time we're fearful that what we're doing is not being accepted. Ibn Abi Mulaika, he mentioned Adraktu thalathin min ashab al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kulluhum yakhafu nifaq ala nafsih I met 30 of the sahaba every single one of them he used to fear nifaq, hypocrisy in himself. That's how the Sahaba were, they feared. They never walked on the earth as he, mashallah, as if he's in cloud nine or he's above everyone else. They were humble. They hoped for the reward and at the same time they feared. The Sahaba, they used to fear for themselves. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. What did he do to the statues? Tell me. Huh? He broke them. What's her name? Huh? Hamza. May Allah give you Jannah, Hamza. And make it from the ulama. Say Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa tallahi la kidan aslamakum. He swore by Allah, I'm going to break the aslam. And at the same time, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as is mentioned in Surah Ibrahim, Wajnubni wa baniya an na'bud al aslam. O oh Allah, prevent me and also my offspring from worshipping the statues. Ibrahim is fearing for himself. And he is the one that fought against shirk. He broke it. Brothers and sisters, just because you're sitting here in this message today, do not think that you're safe. And do not look down at those that have gone out tonight celebrating Halloween. Dressing like a shaitan. Do not look down at them. Because wallahi, just because you're sitting in the masjid today, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be what? In the masjid tomorrow. Wallahi, brothers in Leicester, some of us Somali brothers, have now apostated. They don't believe in a God at all. What is the chance that can't be me and you tomorrow? They used to pray in our masajid. It could be any one of us. That's why don't look down. In Somali language they say, <laughs> Don't look down. Hassan al-Basri, he mentioned, in a statement that basically goes back to Hassan al-Basri, don't look down at the people. 
فَيَبْتَلِيكَ اللَّهُ وَيُعَافِيهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will afflict you and at the same time he will what? Make him better. And this is also a problem in our society. Today you find a Muslim woman, Wallahi, my daughters are fine. They are here today. Huh? They are grey, they are wearing hijab. Everything is fine with them. <laughs> Look at that girl. Look at that girl. She doesn't wear hijab. A'udhu billah. Rather, it should be that you make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you firm. In al quluba bayna usbu'ayn min asabi rabb al alameen. The hearts are between the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In sha'a an yuqimahu aqama wa in sha'a yuzigu azaqa. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, he'll put it on the straight path. And if he wants, he'll put it on the deviant path. That simple from Allah azza wa jal. The uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the uncle. He what? Didn't die upon an Islam. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to constantly make dua. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala, ala deenik. Oh, twister of the hearts. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would make, make, make dua. He would make dua. Keep my heart. Firm upon your religion. And if you want any fitna for your ibad, then take me away while I'm not corrupted or infatuated. So that brings us now, and inshallah ta'ala, I want to conclude with this. Halloween. Wallahi is a big ni'mah. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, it's a big bounty that you are sitting here today. It's a big blessing. That you're not walking around with a plastic bag with seats in there. And dressing like a shaitan. Or a devil. Whatever you might want to call some of these people they're trying to be like. If you look back, firstly, what is Halloween? This evil spirits are coming out. They're going around. Huh? In other words, we are celebrating... For the evil, devilish spirits that are coming out. And the Muslim today comes out and he celebrates with the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told you, you have a clear enemy. Who's his enemy? Forget about John and Mark. They are your neighbors that want to do something to you. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about who's your clear enemy? Shaitan. He swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Clearly. Couldn't get clearer than that. فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ He swears by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am going to mislead all of them. وَلَأُضِلَّنَّهُمْ وَلَأُمَنِّيَنَّهُمْ وَلَأَمُرَنَّهُمْ فَلَا يُبَتِّكُنَّ آذَانَ الْأَنْعَامِ I will mislead them. I will misguide them. I will make them deviate away. We're coming today and celebrating for the shaitan and the evil spirits. That's the reality of it. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he tried to be different from the disbelievers whenever he could. Whether he was in the clothing. Look at Yom al-Ashura. You don't know what Yom al-Ashura means? The day of Ashura that just went past. What do the Muslims do? They fast. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came to Al-Medina and he saw some of the Jews, they were fasting. He said, what are they doing? So they said to him, هذا يوم عظيم. This is a great day. هذا يوم نجى الله موسى من فرعون. This is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa from the traps of Fir'aun. So because it's a great day, we're going to fast. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, نَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى مِنْهُمْ We have more of a right with Musa than them. So he said, سُومُوا يَوْمًا قَبْلَهُ أَوْ يَوْمًا بَعْدَهُ So to try and be different from them, he said, fast on the day of Ashura. And fast one day before or one day after. Forget about celebrating their celebrations. A man came to the Prophet. ﷺ. He 
He said to him, Inni nadartu an anhara ibalan bibuana. I made an oath that I am going to slaughter. I'm going to slaughter in a place called Buwana. The Prophet asked him two questions. Pay attention here. He asked him two questions. Hal kana fiha wathnun min awthan al jahiliyyati yu'bad? You know in this place, did the people of Jahiliya used to worship their gods there? In this specific place, why are you telling me specifically Buwana? Why can't you do it in Mecca? Why can't you do it in Medina? Why Buwana? So the Prophet ﷺ got a bit suspicious. Why this place? So he asked him two questions. Did the people of Jahiliya used to worship their lords or their gods here? The man said, no. هَلْ كَانَ فِيهَا عِيدٌ مِنْ عَيَادِهِمْ Did they used to have these festivals in this place? So the Prophet ﷺ was going to say no to him if he told the Prophet wasallam that this place was known to the mushriks to be a place of worship. The place, the place, Ikhwani, the place. Forget about actually celebrating it. The place, we're talking about the place. You can't do anything there because of the place. Let alone go in and celebrating with them and bringing to life the devil, the spirit of the devil. And that takes us back to what we were mentioning earlier. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, leave this, what is upon us to do? We have to leave it. We listen and we obey. That doesn't mean, brothers, let me just point something out here. If someone comes to you tomorrow and he says to you, huh? Let's go fight in Syria and join ISIS. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. And he mentions to you a few ayat from the Quran, some ahadith, where he took it out of context. You need to know the ayat and the sunnah, the ahadith in its proper context. That's why you need to learn the religion, your religion. Someone will come up to you with the same lecture that I just gave. Wallahi akhi. Huh? You listen. You obey. Go ISIS now. Otherwise you're a gal. No, ikhwani. You need to learn your religion. You need to know the difference between right and wrong. And the only way to differentiate is by knowledge. And being close to the people of knowledge. Those who are known to be upon insight. And to be upon what? Knowledge. That's why it's very, very dangerous. That's why it's very, very dangerous that you are not able to differentiate between what is haq and what is batil. Today people will come up to you, Wallahi, we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We love him more than anything. Like some of the Sufiya and the Brelviya, what do they do? They celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is this true love? Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do it? Did Abu Bakr do it? Did Umar do it? Did Uthman do it? Did Ali radiallahu anhu do it? Why are you going to come to me today and tell me something that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala never ever legislated? And then there's emotions, they get emotional. Oh no, wallahi we love the Prophet. Khalas, love the Prophet, then do what he told you to do. In Leicester, mashallah, on the day, everybody comes out. People are stampeding the road. Celebrating the celebration of the Prophet ﷺ. Are you allowed to celebrate your birthday? No. Why not? Huh? It's not from the celebrations of the Muslims, is it? It's not the celebrations of the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ said in hadith, ما تركت شيئا يقربكم إلى الله إلا وأمرتكم به I haven't left an issue that gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except that I commanded you with it. Everything has been made clear. If there was any good in the matter, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would have told him, his companions who loved him more than him, sorry, the companions who loved the Prophet more than any of us, they would have transmitted it to us and they would have done it. So this is fake love. That's why Hassan al basri mentioned the ayah that we mentioned. Some people they thought 
They claimed that they loved Allah Azza wa and His Messenger and He tested them with this ayah. Brothers, I have to go. I'm getting a letter here. I've got a lesson at 9 o'clock and I'm going to be late. Allahumma sta'an. Brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you from those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do whatever He told them to do. They say we listen and we obey. And you give presidents more than Allah to Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger more than anything else. If there's something that I said that was mistaken or that was incorrect, then this is from myself and the shaytan. Wallahu wa rasuluhu bari'an. Allah Azza wa Jalla and Messenger are free from this. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. And salamu alaykum ila al-liqa. We'll meet another time inshallah. And I'll ask you all your questions. I remember your faces.